security correspondent. Joining us now, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Fox News contributor Monica Crowley, Fox News Middle East and terrorism analyst Dr. Walid Ferris, former CIA operative and head of the bin Laden tracking unit, Michael Scheuer. Good to have you all with us. Let me begin, Monica, with you. Uh, Mokhtar Bel Mokhtar, the leader of this group of terrorists, uh, he has appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, what do we know about it? Not exactly a household name until now. What we do know is that the northern part of Mali, actually the northern half of the country of Mali, has fallen under the control of three hardcore al-Qaeda groups. This is the leader of the major one. He is, ha, has one eye, lost an eye, fighting in Afghanistan. And uh, he is known to be an unrepentant al-Qaeda terrorist. That is how much we know. We can also pretty much deduce, uh, Lou, that based on the lack of a strong American response, or frankly, any American response, to the carnage in Benghazi, where we lost four Americans, four Americans were killed, including the personal representative of the President of the United States, the U.S. Ambassador, that al-Qaeda leaders like this man have taken a signal that the United States is not going to move aggressively in this kind of action. So what we see coming out of the Benghazi, the failure to respond there, is an emboldened al-Qaeda, not just in Mali and Nigeria and elsewhere in Africa, but around the world. Michael Schurer, do you, do you agree with Monica on that, uh, on that assessment? No, I don't think so. I think the, we know a lot about Bel Mokhtar. He is probably the closest thing to Osama bin Laden that we've seen in terms of his ability to get along, along with different ethnic groups and different religious associations. He's a very talented man, a very good organizer. And I think Benghazi was important. It's not surprising that Obama's administration didn't respond. But I think you have to look beyond. That's a minor blip. The American military was defeated in Iraq. It was defeated in Afghanistan. We've come home in defeat, although the American people don't seem to perceive that. The Muslim world sees it very clearly. The Mujahideen now have, now have beaten both superpowers. And that's the issue we're facing. We're facing a movement that's not, it, we're all done facing it, Lou, in, in Mali and mm -hmm. Algeria and, and in Somalia and in Pakistan, looking at it as kind of separated issues. It's all one movement. It's all self-perpetuating. And it's all motivated by our, by, our motiv by our intervention. The French have united a very disparate group of Islamist organizations in Mali by intervening there. And, and Walid, as, as, as Michael lays it out, uh, the, the United States defeated as he characterized it. And by the way, uh, I, I'm not sure that the national media even confronts that, uh, uh, that certain reality that the United States has lost in Iraq, has lost in Afghanistan. Those are not words that trip easily off the American tongue, are they? No, but these are the concepts, the notions, the perceptions of the jihadists themselves. Absolutely. If you listen to them, read their statements, uh, including Zawahiri uh, a few weeks ago after Benghazi, he is pretty much convinced that we have been defeated in Afghanistan and in Iraq, and we have been defeated actually in Benghazi. And now, wait, because you may see in a few weeks uh, statements by Al-Qaeda Central and other factions saying, we are now fighting the French. It doesn't matter if they lose people on the ground. They are fighting France in Mali, that they are fighting now the international community, of course, in, in this uh, issue. The most important thing, Lou, in my perspective is, who are we fighting? There is a notion in Washington that these are thugs, these are some extremists, mm -hmm. dispersed, they don't know what they want, they're traveling from Libya to Mali, and, and that's how things happen. Not at all. This is a federation of organizations. If they are offshoots or divisions, this is an internal business. Guess what? They have the same flag across North Africa. They have the same ideology. They have a war room. They decide to attack in Benghazi. They decide to move against Bamako in the south, which prompted the French to intervene. And they decided to attack an international center. That's pretty much an army. These are not just dispersed thugs that we are uh, uh, confronting. The Algerian military has concluded its operations against the terrorists who had been holding the hostages and that uh, gas complex in eastern Algeria. It's at an end. We